the evolution of the Tyranid War Beast. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Voldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the factions, faces, and forces of the Warhammer 40k setting. The grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace, there is only time for war. We now have super thanks, so like, subscribe, and throw me a coin if you enjoy this video more than usual, or patron, of course. And today, we are to look at the new forms of the Great Devourer, the Tyranid High Fleet. Of course, I shall kick off the piece proper with one of my little tales, to attempt to show the nature of the topic in a more listener-friendly way. There are now so many who really shine at the clinical deconstruction, which is heartening to see, and far more adroitly than I could ever muster. And so, in my own inimitable way, let us go on to the story. I can see it in their eyes, all of them as they look at me. I can hear it, their breaths held, waiting, listening, for it, the only thing they need. I can smell it, their tiredness, their toil. It hangs off them like a miasma, blood, sweat, loss. I can see it in their eyes as they look at me, the windows into their troubled and terrified souls. Their hands shake, their weapons clutched with white knuckles, or suspended in hands ready to let them drop. So many of them, not one unblemished by the caress of the fray, the mark of war. They have endured so much, and they can hear the ground rumble with the advance of the enemy. They are defeated. This moment is their last. They have just enough strength to look at me. But theirs are not the hollow eyes of the dead. They're wide and glistening. They're the eyes of a thousand children. This is the only moment I have. If I fail them now, they are all dead. They need me to give them the one thing they have lost. They need hope. I walk to the front of the overhang. I slowly take off my helm. I crane my head and look in all directions as I turn on the spot. The scarred windows above, the rubble-strewn streets below. I look at them all. I make eye contact with as many of them as possible. And I do as I was trained to do. I attempt to bring them that most elusive thing. I speak of hope. I state that we can and will survive, if only our faith is strong enough. Then I try to rekindle the fires. And I, I speak of fortitude. I speak of courage. I speak of the glory that they have already achieved. Then I stop. I pause and take stock. They can all see me. They can all hear my message. But I am not the one who speaks it, not truly. For, to them, I am one of his Astartes. I am his angel of death. I speak his words. The Emperor. He has sent me to lead them. The eyes are wide but no longer glisten. Their stance is wider. Some shake their weapons, but not in fear. Never. They can feel it. He is with us. I raise the tempo. I draw my sword and I point it to the heavens. And I speak of wrath. And my words are punctuated by their cheers. My oaths are resounded in their thousand throats. I speak of death and revenge and slaughter on our enemy. And when I ask them, who is with me? There is not one of them who is silent. We then man our defenses. 
They do not lope, they run. They charge to the stockade, the battlements, the windows. Every gun emplacement is brought online, every firing nest filled with special or heavy weapons teams. And I stand upon the centermost segment of the defenses. They are coming. The sun dips below the horizon behind us as we look out onto the pockmarked hellscape outside. Muddy craters scores of feet across, filled with water and Xenos bodies and blood. The box battery fire had taken its toll over the preceding week, according to the reports I read on the way here. Dropped off by a storm raven, each marine of four tactical squads dispersed across the front. There were Astartes concentrations, but not many, and not here. This was a defensive position of only tertiary import to the overall line, but its loss would mean flanking possible too early in the complete battle for comfort. So, we came to stiffen the lines. I am Astartes, an ultramarine. I am Lucullus of Macrag. I will not falter. I will not let these people fall. I have faced the bug before and have brought them low. And so, with the dark, with the dusk, they come. And I order the shelling to begin. From miles behind our lines, the Emperor's wrath is unleashed. Landing amongst the foe as they charge towards us, I instruct my soldiers on where to fire, when to fire, and how much to fire. I know the enemy. With overlapping fields of destruction, artillery sport from the rear, we cull them. Termagants rush across the plains in their thousands, gargoyles like flies thick in the skies. And our batteries whir as they pump stubber fire into the air, making it rain dead nids on those below. Yet something is different. Something about the way the swarms move. They are not one wave of flesh anymore. There are as many, but there are separate currents, different streams of them. They do not rush onward so dense, so deep. When our fire strikes, they scatter from its path. Before, we would kill scores with a single bombardment shell. Not so now. And the heavy fire from the stubbers is less economic than I had hoped. For even in the skies, they now seem to be broken into more squadrons than thunderheads. They are not one huge flock, but many swirling flotillas of gargoyles, all led by larger flying primes. They get closer than our tactical position should permit. Then it happens. I had expected something, anything, but this. Burrowing, bursting from below, it comes with a trigon in our center behind the walls. The fire teams I placed in exactly the right position are already lighting up the mammoth being. Melter shots and Laz cannons dart into it, and the trigon is dead before it can slay a single one of my soldiers. But it was not alone. A thing comes out from behind a shadow. It strikes at me on all levels. I can feel a wave of power, warp power, emanate from it in waves of fear, just as its claws and tentacles lash at me. I have fought a lictor before, but this one is different. The men and women around me, they unman themselves. They quail and flee in panic. I am near overwhelmed mentally, but my reactions are those of the Astartes. They are fast and they are automatic. My bolt pistol is raised on fires to reduce its vectors of movement. My blade comes up, and I slice off one of its thorned appendages. Despite my every instinct to flee, ah, even me, I stand. Instead of stumbling back, giving ground as it might expect, I launch myself forward with my sword extended. It is so startled at my superhuman speed, I catch it directly in the middle of its horror of a face. It is dead before I withdraw the blade, whipping it into the air as others cheer. My men and women return, too fast for normal. They are not broken by fear, but by the power of the Xenos, the scum. Warp trickery. Yet the night is long, 
and I lose more and more men than I would expect. I, a veteran of the tyrannic wars, they have better organization, more flexibility. The enemy have also far more accurate beasts now. Not as large as a biovore, but not as visibly identifiable amidst the Gaunts either. They fire their weapons into our lines, exploding like flechettes. Tiny barbs slam out from them and kill all around. The barbs of these Gaunts cause our men to keep their heads down, and as they do, the enemy closes unchallenged, unharmed, and the pressure on the dam rises. The walls are reached, and the new horrors amidst the Gaunts are revealed, like small elictors, but no less aggressive. They scale the walls with ease and burst over the battlements into our lines. Von Ryan's leapers, they die. We kill them all, but they kill many of my soldiers for each one that passes. We are beaten back. But it turns into a deluge when the thing arise. Descending from above, a squid-like bulbous body, tentacles like those of a venomthrope. It is a brain with a crest and teeth, yet surrounded by neurothropes, the eyeless things all lashing out with their psychic fire. Beams of their hate turn battlements into rubble, men and women into charred smoking skeletons. In their midst, this floating mega-brain, this mental tyrant, Waves of power come from it, far beyond anything the Lictor did. The waves from this being slam against the souls of my soldiers, and they either died or they broke. No pretty speech could stop them, no punishment return them. The being came down toward me, but it was a distraction. As I fire up at it, blowing slithering limbs from it, much of my fire bouncing off a mental force shield. It is then that one of the Tyranid Primes drops out of the sky behind me. I am too slow. Despite my armor and jeans, resisting the effect of the brain bug, I am too slow. Its claws tear into my shoulder pauldrons. I have failed my soldiers. And now, they will all die. The Prime finishes the job. Now I think it best that I do that which many find risible. I shall quote the exact text from the source, but please rest assured, this is not laziness. Although I'm no Shakespeare, I have not many who derided or diminished my grasp of my mother tongue and its deployment. I quote so that you know from your balls to your brows, that I am not misguiding or misconstruing the details related. I feel that the breakdown in stories more than indicate my intimate knowledge of the subject matter, although I claim no superior insight on the matter. My perspective on many entries, details or even foibles has been adjusted, sometimes quite radically, by the comments section and those who take the time to impart that which they know also. So, if there is any nuance you are fuzzy on, one I have not been clear on, then perhaps check out the comments section, and one of the older hands or bright young bucks may have imparted the information for us all. So, do check that comments section if in doubt, and, as always, please attempt to maintain decorum if you can. Request only, I am but a servant. And now, for the official statements behind the new bioforms of the armies of the high fleets of the Tyranids. For the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote the Neurolictor, the hive mind has not rested on its sinewy laurels since creating the perfect assassin. Carefully orchestrated evolution has created a new strain of Lictor a psychological horror whose highly developed neural organs emit a wave of psychic dread that causes even the most iron-willed warriors to experience an atavistic terror response. These psychic powers grant them the ability to mask their presence by confounding their enemy's senses, rendering them helpless when the main Tyranid force arrives to finish the job.
the Norn Emissary. Among the teeming multitudes of ravenous horrors that make up the Tyranid High Fleet, there are few towering beasts that strive above the swarm, the will of the hive mind made manifest in an abhorrent behemoth. The Norn Emissary is perhaps the ultimate synapse creature, bigger and nastier than even a hive tyrant. They are evolved for the singular purpose of preying on gifted commanders or abducting knowledgeable prey from heavily defended strongholds. Before battle, the Norn Queen imbues this Goliath with the distilled knowledge it needs to succeed in its mission, which it prosecutes with a combination of brute strength and incredible psionic power, backed up by a frankly unnatural degree of agility for a creature of its size. Once unleashed, they stalk their target with eerie alien grace, something a creature their size should not possess, and emissaries are also able to compress their mass into seemingly impossible confines if they need to. When the Norn emissaries near their target, however, they move with serpentine speed and are able to leap a great distance into the air and fall upon their prey with sword-like talons. The emissaries can use their weapons with blistering speed and also have such immense physical strength that they are capable of easily tearing an Adeptus Custodes apart. This allows them to stomp a Custodes to death, use their legs to kick one's head off, or use their tails to snap a Custodes' neck. The Norn Assimilator If the Norn Emissary is the brainy avatar of the High Fleet, the Norn Assimilator is its raw strength made flesh. When the High Fleet has decided a particular prey creature or fortification must be eliminated, it sends forth an inexhaustible Norn Assimilator. In the face of such raw alien power, running is the only sensible decision. In its infinite alien wisdom, the Hive Mind has already thought this through. So the Norn Assimilator packs a pair of massive toxin injector harpoons to pinion its prey in place. The Neuro Tyrant The Neuro Tyrant is a support focused creature. It hovers across terrain much like a zoanthrope, though unlike their smaller cousins, they sport a multitude of thrashing tendrils to whip anything within range. Its giant brain exists to focus the mental powers of the Tyranids, increasing the psychic pressure exerted by the shadow in the warp, while simultaneously relaying the critical synapse network to less developed creatures. The Neurogaunt Neurogaunts serve as crucial relays for the synapse network and bodyguards for those that would focus it. Larger node beasts can be distinguished by the bulbous growth on their backs, while the smaller gaunts chitter around it with sharp claws and teeth. The Winged Prime The Tyranid Prime is an evolved version of the Tyranid warrior bioform, usually found leading their brethren on foot. But this winged variant can take to the skies to carry its razor-sharp claws and synapse ability far and wide. Von Ryan's Leapers The Tyranid hive mind has numerous ways of waging war, overwhelming the foe with hordes of termagants, melting bastions apart with the living artillery of the Tyranifex, or by ambushing with more subtle fear-inducing organisms such as the Lictor. Added to this list, are the Von Ryan's Leapers. Whoever this unfortunate Von Ryan was, he has a truly horrifying creature named after him. These Leapers take genetic elements from the Hormagons and Lictors, combining their best qualities to create a deadly melee threat. Von Ryan's Leapers move exceedingly fast thanks to their balancing tails, and their small size makes them especially good ambush predators. Barb Gorns Barbgaunts are a Tyranid artillery organism. Working closer to the front line than hive guard and biovores, the bio cannons on their backs are actually bonded with the same parasitic organism that has enslaved the rest of the gaunt to its will, merging body and weapon into a single lethal entity. Five stout limbs serve to support its living weapon to provide a stable firing platform, 
while the sixth is little more than an atrophied talon. These beasts of burden are controlled by cerebral parasites, fleshy tendrils digging into each barb god's eyeless skull to direct its organic payload. The Psychophage The massive psychophage is an organic furnace that gobbles up enemies and turns their essence into a raging psychoclastic torrent. Their favorite food is psychers, and the mass of whipping tentacles around their gaping maw can strip the mind from the warp inclined before they can lift their magic book, staff, or orb in defense. This creature's massive bulk and terrifying fanged maw harks back to the Haraspex, but the psychophage has a more selective diet in mind. End quote. So simply and starkly put, such economy of words. Excellent. It leaves us wanting more, of course. I miss the days of multiple paragraphs on each new unit. But then, I would say that. Yet, this is where we can sit together and think of what this all means. One must take oneself away from the reality to do so, of course. For most will balk and think, well... Obviously, it is just a need for more sales and more modelling, gaming and tactical challenges for the budding hobbyist. All of this is true, of course, but we can also allow it to show us what is happening in the setting, what the story is. And I must admit to being deeply concerned, more than ever before, for the entire galaxy. For these new bioforms are incredibly specific in their roles, yet they show an evolution in the high fleets, a worrying one. I have before stated that, from where I see things, the Tyranids are only beginning to display their true ability, threat and potential modus operandi, their plots and schemes. Only recently, I tried to impart the sheer vastness there was between galaxies, mind-boggling distances. Yet the Tyranids have come from other galaxies toward our own. Or at least, this is what is believed. And now they begin to really show their, their terrifying ways. They are now constructing some form of base, we know. A system that they have not stripped bare and consumed, but where they seem to be, if anything, fortifying. Is the locust effect of the first wave of the hive just the shock troops clearing space for their race? It is now worryingly possible for it means that they are here to stay. Which means, neither humanity, Eldar, or anyone else can merely hide in the webway and hope they will eventually eat and then leave. That after millennia, they may simply move on. Not if what is happening on Xyaphoria is indicant of a new wave of their assault on the galaxy. Not consumption, but pure infestation. It has always been said that the Tyranids evolve between battles, that they learn. And this is now coming more to the fore. For the Neuroelector, Neurotyrant, Neurogaunts show a worrying trend began by the Neurothropes. The bugs have seen the infinite potential of harnessing the warp and what it could do to stop them. So they have countered. By developing more specialist bugs to thwart the psychers of the Milky Way galaxy. The psychophage means something different in my mind. Yes. They are able to detect, then consume psychers on the battlefield. Nasty. But they also seem to be something of a way of dealing with the powers of the Neverborn. Just perhaps. Yet when you add that to the other new forms, it gets even more troubling. For the Norn Emissary and Assimilator, the Neuroelectors and Von Ryan's Leapers now show that they do not see every population of the galaxy as merely food. For these beings are mostly blurted forth from the Norn Queens to identify, then eradicate the leadership structure of any defending race. Clever. When added to the tactical use of the Barbgorns, and the Neurotyrant also show the extension of the hive mind. They do not wish to be able to merely drown defending worlds in flesh anymore. Otherwise, why and reinforce the synapse so much? This indicates to me, at the very least, that they are more aware than ever of tactical concerns. 
This strategy has been developing as well, of course, as we have heard in the Leviathan Law segment recently, but their realization of tactical nuance and the way to maximize enemy casualties while reducing their own. Perhaps this is due to the wars in Octarius against the Orcs. Perhaps it has been the setbacks of being repelled from not only Macrag, but Baal as well. Perhaps they are now more cautious due to the new starvations forced on them by Cryptman's scorched earth dead zone. But they do seem to be exhibiting a care for their forces that is at odds with their previous doctrines. In the earliest days of the First Tyrannic War, they would simply appear above a world and then cover the skies with spores, and through avalanches of living warrior beasts did they simply crush all before them. Or they did, until Macrag. The next stages brought the larger beasts, the Carnifexes, the Screamer Killer, Trigon and Turvigan, yet still mostly a new design on a common theme. These larger beasts would smash down walls and defences and armour when needed. The warriors continued to charge and develop. The feeder beasts, the blaster beasts, all slowly changing and developing, but weight of numbers was all they truly needed. For nothing was lost, as all would be reclaimed at the end in victory. Those stacks of dead consumed and returned as new biomass. Yet the war against the orcs has forced the Tyranids to be more cunning. And this seems to have been transposed over to near all fleets. They can still drown defenders until they are dead. But now, they can soften up targets easier, can send psychic shockwaves, can assassinate the entire command staff, can act in perfect ballets of interchanging mixed armed units, as the hive mind is projected to so many nodes, so many a carrier synapse beast. They can be flexible and subtle now. Terrifying concept, I hope you agree. The bug has come to our galaxy from such a distance. They must have set off many millennia ago, if not eons ago. And so, they have brought everything they need to not just rampage through and consume everything here. What if they have brought everything they need to set up permanently in this galaxy? The fleet tendrils move in ever more complex patterns, constantly directed by the one mind, the one will. And now, even on the battlefields of the grim darkness of the far future, the Tyranids are no longer cannon fodder. They are becoming warriors par excellence. Let us hope that the Silent King, the Primarchs, the Phoenix Lords, the War Bosses and the Ethereals can be as adaptive in their methods. Because if they cannot, then the galaxy entire will fall. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.